Hi, this is Dan Buller, retired electronics engineer, sitting out here on the front deck of my houseboat again. So, a lot of you watch these videos and they say, you know, this guy claims to know all this stuff in Excel, but Excel is not the real world. And yeah, that's true. Excel is not the real world. Um, but remember, I made that video for Applicos called uh, Audio Quality and Total Harmonic Distortion. And um, that's got like 15,500 views. I got a cool thing in there. I was clipping the top and bottom and then both the top and bottom of the waveform, sine wave, when I was testing a 16-bit analog to digital converter from analog devices. So I was testing that analog devices A to D and I tested by clipping the top and then the bottom and then both the top and bottom. And when you clip the top and bottom equally or as equally as I could get, we found out there's no even harmonics. And it's pretty cool and you know Bruce Tibbetts took exception to that, so what? Because I captured those waveforms and I've got pictures of them. I went into Excel to see if I could like replicate it in Excel to make sure that my Excel spreadsheet was replicating real life. And so what I did was I went in and I clipped the bottom of the wave 242.8473539 degrees. I didn't know from the Apple Coast video when I did it and I was fooling with the Apple Coast clipping this waveform and the way I did it was I took the wave and I added a DC offset to it so when I added a positive DC offset it made the sine wave go above the input voltage of the ADC causing it to clip on the top of the wave and that created this spectrum and then I added another one volt offset on the to the negative to force it to go down to clip the negative side of the sine wave and got me this waveform and then I got this spectrum and you might say oh those those two spectra look very similar they're they're identical well they're not identical they're not identical not not really, you know, you have to look really close. If you clip the top and clip the bottom at exactly the same angle, you would get a spectrum that looks exactly the same for each one. It would be the same thing. But there was a four millivolt offset in the DAC. And so when you look closely at the positive peak spectrum, so I'm clipping the positive peak, and then I clip the negative peak and look at the spectrum and there's a very slight difference. Can you see it? Those two bins in the positive peak clipping are equal. They're pretty much flat equal. But there's two bins, the same two bins on the negative clipping that are not equal and they should be if, you know, if there was an equal uh, distortion between the two. So I didn't clip at exactly the same angle when I clipped the top as when I clipped the bottom. And so that's how I knew later on when I did the uh, clipping the top and bottom, I knew that there was a, an offset somewhere in there. But I thought, you know, one thing that I could do, because you may not trust me, you may not trust my Excel spreadsheet. And so what I did was I went in and tried to replicate the negative clipping by clipping the negative peak on a sine wave in Excel and then doing the FFT. The problem is, you know, I, I didn't know what, what the angle was when I clipped it on the uh, applicos. I mean, who would know, right? You can't know. But in Excel, I can know. And so what I did was I clipped it, I did the FFT, 45 minutes to an hour and a half later, I took a look and, okay, it didn't quite match. So then I changed it to another place, ran the FFT, 45 minutes to an hour and a half later, I checked again, nope, not quite right. So then I kept doing it. Remember 
Bullard Laws of Harmonics number two, that the angle where the distortion intersects the sine wave is what determines the harmonic signature. And so that harmonic signature is very specific if you look very closely. And, you know, I've, I've done this shit for years, you know. You, you, you look at it kind of generally and say, oh yeah, so there's some kind of distortion. No, look very carefully. So if you look very, very carefully, like you did with the positive peak clipping spectrum and the negative peak clipping spectrum, look very carefully and you can find out what's going on. You can find out what's happening. So I clip the negative peak at various points and eventually I got one that was a good match. And that was again at 242.8473539 degrees. Now, on the Apple Coast I would have never known what that angle was. There is no way to know. No way to tell at all. But in Excel, of course, I can go into my transfer function and look at it and figure out exactly where it is. So 242.8473539 degrees, that's the angle where I clipped that sine wave. And when I look at it in Excel, I get this. So it's an exact match. Now, that's minus the noise and stuff that you see on the Applicos. But the Applicos is a very clean machine. There's not a lot of noise. And so, um, I, obviously, I'm not injecting noise when I do an FFT on the uh, Excel stuff. But uh, it came out pretty cool. So this is a really cool thing. Excel is real. Excel and my formulas represent what's really happening in the real world. The Buller Harmonic Solution, it's real. Take a look at my other video and you'll see that it, it matches what the spectrum is from the Excel stuff. And in the real world, it really matches uh, what, what the Excel thing is doing. So, Excel, I haven't figured out. I know what's going on with harmonics. And if you pay attention, you will too. So once again, from the river, this is Dan Bullard. See you later.